Hey guys, my name is Nikhil, and I'm a tutor here at Che. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Kirchhoff's Laws. Simply put, Kirchhoff's Laws are two laws that apply to circuits that allow us to solve for currents, resistances, and voltages in a way that is much simpler than solving them without these two laws. So a little bit of background, Kirchhoff's Laws were devised by Gustav Kirchhoff in like the 1840s. And the crazy part about all this is that he developed these laws as part of an undergraduate project, which is incredible. If who knows, save your college projects, they may become uh, important to science one day. So this, so now let's go into the two laws that he came up with. So first, our first law says that the sum of all currents entering and leaving a node is equal to zero. Now, before we delve into what this means, I'm, I just want to set up this circuit for you. We have a 10 volt battery in parallel with the 5 ohm resistor and another 5 ohm resistor. Now, let's, let's come back to the law. So the law says the sum of all currents entering and leaving a node is zero. What does that mean? If you rearrange it, um, you can also derive the meaning the sum of all currents entering a node is equal to the sum of all currents exiting a node. That's another way to look into it. And using this circuit, I will demonstrate how, how that's possible. So we have a 10 volt battery in parallel with these two resistors. First, we can solve for the current that's coming out of the 10 volt battery. So we can use the um, par parallel resistances formula to solve for an equivalent resistance of these two, which is going to give us 5 times 5 over 5 plus 5. Whoops, that should be a 5. That gives us 2.5 ohms. And then if we use Ohm's law, 10 volts divided by 2.5 ohms is going to give us 4 amps coming out of the battery. But since there are two resistors, the current's going to be split. How can we solve for the current across each of the resistors simply? Normally, we, were, we would re refer to Kirchhoff's laws, but in this case, the circuit is simple enough that we can just use the definition. So what does it mean if two circuit elements are in parallel? What that means is that they share the same top and bottom nodes. And the, the next implication of that is that they both share the same voltage drop. So this battery has a voltage drop of 10 volts across it, right? So if we set this to ground, ground is zero by convention. If this is zero, then we see, okay, we're adding 10 volts. So now this is 10 volts. And then we see that in both of these resistors, the bottom node is zero and the top node is 10 volts. So we know that there's a voltage drop of 10 volts across both of these uh, resistors. And then we can solve for the current across them using Ohm's law again. Since we know there's an individual voltage drop of 10 volts across each of the battery resistors, we can use Ohm's law once again to find the current in each of them. And we find two amps in each of them. And now let's, let's take a look at this node. And lo and behold, Kirchhoff's first law is true. Four amps are entering that node, and then two amps are leaving one way, and two amps are leaving another way. The sum of the or the the amount of current entering a node is equal to the amount of current exiting a node, which intuitively makes sense because all the current that's entering at one point has to come out somewhere. There's nowhere else for this current to go. It it can't just vanish. Also, so um, that's uh, that's how that works. Now we can look at a, a sample problem where we. Um, where this formula becomes extremely useful, this idea. And before we do that, the formal definition, as I said before, says that the sum of the currents entering and exiting a node is zero. But you might be wondering, how is it possible that adding up four plus two plus two, well, I get eight, right? That's not equal to zero. The thing with this, um, with the currents entering and leaving a node, is that you have to assign signs to one of them. So if you assign current entering a node to be um, positive and current exiting a node to be negative, that's one way to do it. Or you could do current exiting a node as positive and current entering a node as negative. So if we look here, 
if we set current entering a node to be positive, then let's add up all the currents. So uh, using the sign convention, we get plus four, minus two, and minus two. And if we add them all up, we get zero. And another thing is that if we move all these two to this side, we'll get four is equal to two plus two. The other implication, the sum of currents entering a node is equal to the sum of currents exiting a node. So now let's look at the first problem. So we have a seven amp current source in parallel with the four ohm resistor and a three ohm resistor. So now what we want to do is we want to find the individual currents between the two resistors. So let's use Kirchhoff's first law. So we know that at this point, um, the current entering is seven. And then the sum of the currents leaving that node are I, the, or the two currents leaving that node are I1 and I2. And due to Kirchhoff's first law, we know that they're equal. So that gives us one equation with the two variables. However, whenever we're solving for two variables, we need two, equa two unique equations to solve for those two variables. And now let's look at the next, we need to come up with another equation, right? Well, let's see, these two resistors are in parallel. So what you can do is we know that the voltages across them are going to be equal. So how do we get the voltage across them? Well, using Ohm's law, right? V equals IR. So then we know that four times the current of I1 is equal to three times I2. So that's good. Now we have two equations. I moved it over for convenience so that we can solve um, using elimination. And then, and then we can just solve. So then multiply this equation by three, which allows you to eliminate I2. You get seven I1 is equal to 21. I1 is equal to 3, and since 3 plus I2 must equal 7, I2 has to equal 4. So that's one, one place where Kirchhoff's law gave us another equation. Um, allows you to um, solve, um, grants you another equation for your variables. Okay, now let's move on to Kirchhoff's second law. So Kirchhoff's second law states that the sum of the voltages across any closed loop is equal to zero. Now let's take a look at what this actually means. Uh, for this circuit, I have provided um, defined voltages at each point. However, the thing to note is that in a normal circuit, individual voltages don't matter. The voltage drops are what count. And I'm going to explain that right here. So let's say we set this, this node equal to ground, right? So we're at zero volts and then we pass through the battery and we're like, oh, okay, we have a voltage gain of 10 volts. So now um, we're at 10 volts. And actually before we do that, we need to find the current through this circuit so that we can solve for the voltage drops. So we see we have 10 volts in series with two five ohm resistors. So uh, the equivalent resistance of these five, two resistances in series is just the sum of their resistances. We divide 10 volts by 5 plus 5, which gives us 1 amp of current running through the circuit. So now we can find, uh, now we're at 10 volts up here. And then, okay, we need to pass through this resistor, but we need to know the voltage drop. So we see we have a 5 ohm resistor multiplied by 1 amp. V equals IR will give us the voltage drop. And we see that, okay, we have a drop of 5 volts. So now, once we cross through here, we're at 5 volts. 10 minus 5 gives us 5. And then we pass through the, res the second resistor, and we see, oh, V equals IR, another drop of 5 volts. And lo and behold, we're back at 0. But like I said before, individual voltages do not matter. All that matters to the circuit are circuit differences. That is what drives current, and I'm going to show you. So if we set this to 20 volts, right? A voltage gain of uh, 10 volts would still give 30 volts. And then if you look at it, right, um, this is the same thing as our original circuit because this node is 20 volts and this node is 30 volts. So even though the numbers are bigger, the voltage difference between these two resistors is still 10 volts. 
Um, so this, the same amount of current is going to be driven through because all that matters is the difference. So um, you run, so you have a drop of 10 volts again and you have 10 ohms. So you know that one amp of current is gonna go through. And if we're at 30 volts, another drop of five volts, so we're at 25, another drop of five volts and we're back at 20. That's a, um, not directly related to Kirchhoff's laws, but it is very important to remember that single voltages are meaningless in a circuit. Only voltage drops drive current and count for something. Okay, so now we can move on to uh, a problem where we, we use this conveniently. So let's... Sorry, I'll just move this so that you can see. So this is this is 10 volts. Uh, 10 volts. Okay, just so you can see. Okay, so we have 10 volts hooked up to um, a 5 ohm resistor, and then we have another 5 ohm resistor closing the loop, but then attached to that same node is another 10 volt battery and a 5 ohm resistor. Oh, I rewrote it on this page. Okay, here we go. So now, okay, what's the first step? So first, let's, um, we have three currents that we're trying to solve for. We're trying to solve for all three. So let's take a look at finding our equations first. So using Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can see that, okay, if we take the sum of the voltages um, across this loop, voltage drops, we're going to get zero. So we see a gain of 10 volts, so we're like, okay, add 10. And then I1 is passing through this resistor. We have I1 um, passing through this resistor in terms of how we defined it. Uh, I1 is passing through, so that's a drop of minus 5 I1. And then we're going through this resistor here, and then I3 is going there, so the drop is going to be minus I3 we subtract. And we have defined it such that I1 is this current, and I2 is this one, and I3 is over here. So I1 is equal to I3 plus I2. What is that? That is a formulaic representation of Kirchhoff's first law. The sum of all currents entering a node is equal to the sum of all currents exiting a node. So that, that gives us another equation. We need three equations, three unique equations to solve for this. So we have this as one of our equations, and then we take this as another one of our equations. So let us see. Now we need to come up with another loop, right? So the first thing we need to do with when coming to when it comes to Kirchhoff's voltage law is define a loop. So what does that mean? A loop is defined as a closed loop if after traveling um, from one node throughout a circuit, as soon as you return to the same node, that is your loop. So let's go through what I did for this first loop, right? So this is all one node. This is all held at the same potential. And then you go up to 10 volts. We're at a 10 volt node. And then we drop down to this node, which has 10 minus 5 I1 volts. And then we drop down again, and we're back at zero. And that's it. The, from where we started to where we finished, the, that um, is connected. And then this is our loop. That is very important to remember because Kirchhoff's second law involving voltages only applies to any closed loop. For example, if we did, if we went to the, if, across the battery, across this resistor, down this resistor, and then up to this, this point, that's not a closed loop. We stopped at this node, so that's where the loop ends. So, now we'll look for another loop. So, okay, we saw this loop, right? Why not this loop, the second square? So let's come up with that equation. So starting at this node, we see a gain of 10 volts. And then, okay, I2 is passing through in the same direction. So we see a voltage drop in this direction. So we subtract 5 I2. This is where it gets interesting, though, because after we come around uh, the loop, what happens is that since I3 is defined as positive 
in this direction, we're actually going in the direction of negative I3. So even though there is a voltage drop, we're going to be subtracting 5 times minus I3. So that will give us plus 5I3 in our equation, and that's set equal to 0. Even though in this situation, the, the final loop turns out to be an, um, a redundant equation, but it is extremely important to practice identifying. Usually people will think this is one loop, this is one loop, but there's another loop that is missed, right? You go across the 10 volt battery, across this 5 ohm resistor, but instead of going down the 5 ohm resistor, you cross the battery again and then go back down the 5 ohm resistor. And that's another loop. You're back at the zero node. You're back at the grounded node. So that gives you an equation. However, that's an extraneous equation that um, uh, it, it, because the numbers are all the same, that will give us an equation that we already have. So we have Kirchhoff's first law and two applications of Kirchhoff's second law. Now, if we uh, simplify this equation, we move 5i1 and 5i3 over to this side, then we get 5i1 plus 5i3 equals 10. And if we divide by 5, we get i1 plus i3 is equal to 2, which is this equation. And then if we look at the second equation, we move everything over, we get 5i2 minus 5i3 equals 10. And then dividing both sides by 5, we get i2 minus i3 is equal to 2. And then we're going to ignore this equation because that, that is extraneous. And then the other thing we know is that i1 is equal to i3 plus i2. So now let's plug it in. So we have i1 in this equation, so we can just substitute i3 plus i2 for that equation, for that variable. So we plug it in, we get i3 plus i2 plus i3 is equal to 2. And combining the i3s, we get 2i3 plus i2 is equal to 2. And our bottom equation, we have, um, I rearranged it to be minus i3 uh, plus i2 because then you can just add the negative to get 0. So if you rearrange this to be minus i3 plus i2 equals 2, and then multiply by 2, you get minus 2i3 plus 2i2 is equal to 4. And if you add these, you're adding 2i3 and minus 2i3, which cancels out. And then you get 3i2 is equal to 6. And then you solve and you get i2 is equal to 2. To two excuse me. And then plugging i2 into this equation, we get 2 minus i3 equals 2. So i3 has to be 0. And since i1 is equal to i3 plus i2, 0 plus 2 is 2. So we get i1 is 2. And that's how, so that is a simple application of two Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws. They are both extremely useful. And as you can see in this entire circuit, which may have looked more complicated using regular circuit analysis, we got three equations using Kirchhoff's laws and we managed to solve. solve. All right, if you have any more questions, please feel free to message me on Chegg. I would be glad to help you out. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.